Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Welcome, whether you're brand new or you've been with me since the beginning. In the intro to my channel, I said that sometimes it will be tutorials and sometimes it will be things that I'm doing for the first time and I'll try and let you know the difference. Today I'm doing something for the first time and it may qualify, it may be about as smart as when I put the crayons in the hot glue gun. I've just been thinking about this and Andy Mess has been trying to convince me to do this and I said, Said, no 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 because after the glue gun incident I didn't want to ruin anything but I have this paint skin here that's just gorgeous and it's actually a fairly thin one and a paint skin if you're not familiar with it is if you do paint pouring or any sort of projects or sometimes people just make them you can put your paint onto waxed paper or your like glass media mat and then peel it off so all this is is dried acrylic paint Look at the colors there. You can take these and glue them onto a journal cover. You can trim them down, put them on the front of a card. I cut them out in stars or shapes. They make amazing backgrounds, right? I mean, think about it. Anything you could do with watercolors or scribble sticks or alcohol. I mean, alcohol inks, right? And this, this is way cheaper. And your friends who paint pour, they think these are trash. What I wanna do is I wanna run this thing through the Sizzix and cut it because I think I would really like to have it in a neat background. So this is one of the dies that Creative Gigi sent me in my Happy Mail. I think it would make a gorgeous card front. And then I have, I started out cleaning my room, is what I was doing. I was watching Cat and Paws Gretchen. She was making a fabulous, journal and I was tidying and then I got down to where I just had a few things so I want to try this I want to get the lighter part of this pattern and some of the nice purple and then put the thank you across it and just see how it looks I haven't done this before and I thought if I'm gonna do something stupid I should at least let you watch maybe you can learn from it and say ha <laughs> Let's never do that. Sarah tried it. I'm going to, I'm usually pretty lazy with my dies and I don't, I don't usually tape my dies down, but I think in this situation, I might need to. And this paint skin is poured on, it looks like the package to a canvas and it's sort of torn. So it's thinner than most, thinner than many, not necessarily thinner than most. And this is a basic Big Shot Sizzix, the one I hauled in. Tuesday morning video quite a while ago and I'm gonna put it through there and we're gonna turn it and see what happens I'll zoom you in a little and just crank the handle like normal it's gonna be a little thicker okay didn't sound like anything broke now what may happen is it may be jammed up in that die oh my gosh you guys look at that it came out beautiful and not only do I have the circle but I have the nice stitch I don't know if the thing was crackled before maybe it was a little because that one's the act of die cutting it may have caused this crackling in the texture which I'm fine with right I buy crackle glaze for that this thing is amazing let's get crazy a paint skin can be super thick it can be brittle it depends a little bit on what you used as your mixing medium when you did your pour or if you just used regular paint oh my gosh look at this one this one might be too luscious to chop up because it has such a cool pattern in it but you might have to keep in mind if it's a really brittle one it probably won't work this one is fairly pliable so what i was thinking was let's try one that doesn't have a paper backing and just has paint now, uh, Andy.mess, I talk about her in other videos, on Instagram, she is the paint pourer, and then I end up with all the skins. This one might be kind of cool. We could just take like this section right here, right, and not cut into this big, amazing, squirrely, oh, except I need the, what the heck's that thing called, the big kick for that, because I don't want to cut this down you know normally we use paper and we're not worried about cutting it there is a big kick out in the shop so another day I could use that one so let's try this one and this one has some areas that aren't solid it has some thinner areas and I'm okay with that my only concern is will it hold together 
So we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to put it right down here. We'll get some, I don't think it matters if you use purple or washi. Sometimes when she does her pours, the stuff that she mixes in is a little like greasy. Like maybe if she uses too much silicone or she's trying a different product. So some of those I wouldn't necessarily use in a paper crafts project because it would make my project greasy. But this one I like. Okay, here we go. Just skin. No paper backing. Oops, we're going to need the handle. She's going to love this when she sees this video because she's been trying to get me to do this. And I wasn't going to, but then I saw that purple one and this adorable die and I thought, oh, these were meant to be. I don't think you could do this with a super detailed die. In fact, I'm impressed at how nice the stitching turns out. Okay, there. My mat has some scarring, right? And the paint skin stuck to it a little. Okay, everything's kind of stuck down. I don't know if you guys can tell that, but see, I'm going to have to figure out how to unhook it all. And paint skins are not, they're not tough. If you have a thin one, you have to be somewhat careful with it. If you have a thicker, uh, very cured, you know, some of them are sturdy. It just depends. Okay, so this one's a thinner one. And what it's done is it pressed itself to the pad. This might be a great case of you need a really thin piece of paper under there or a dryer sheet, you know, fabric softener. And your craft projects don't care if you use the allergy free one or whatever. <laughs> okay, there we go. That is gonna be cool on a card front too. And I cut these. This die is just big enough. This one texturally works, but I mean, it, it's more sturdy. It'll hold up better. I might even do this one. This, this one already has my stamp on the back, so this has to be a vertical card. I could do it like this and put a big flower or a sentiment right here. I think it's pretty cool. If you use paint skins in your projects, don't be shy about mixing and trying things, especially Christine. I know you have a bunch of paint skins, and if you're going to start making cards, you could ink this you could put an embossed pattern or texture. You could put stickers down, whatever you have, and then you could put your paint skin on it. If you have rowdier paint skins like these, I would take this thing. This one has a cool ripple to it. I can tell that she dried it on like freezer paper or something so it wasn't totally flat or maybe one of those foil pans. I've been known to take like this and just trim the edges off right here trim it a little more here, glue this sucker down really well. When I glue these down, I've experimented a little. I think I've used art glitter glue and it's been fine. I've also used the Beacons glue. It kind of melts the acrylic, it's a little weird. So test out your glues a little and experiment to see which one you like. I don't know if art glitter holds long-term because you're gluing acrylic, I, I don't know, but the Beacons kind of melts them. It's a little weird. So you can just trim these off and then put a sticker sentiment. You'd probably still have to glue it or a die cut across the front. I mean, happy birthday. That's a super artsy card and you're done. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. If you have paint skins, then play with them. Don't let them sit around. And don't be shy about asking your friends for them because if they are paint pourers, they have too many. Bye-bye.